It's honestly sort of a bittersweet, sort of sad day for my long-term portfolio that I've been building for over the last seven or eight years now. And this is because I just as of recently decided that I'm going to start selling or trimming down my position of the JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF or JEPI, which I currently have around 1,248 shares of, which collectively pay me around $400 more or less in dividends on a monthly basis. Or to be more specific, not that I'm necessarily going to sell my shares of JEPI, but I am selling cover calls and at least a few lots, at least a few hundred shares of JEPI. And here's some proof, here's some actual screenshots of a few cover calls that I listed for JEPI as of recent. Now, by selling cover calls on JEPI, it basically means that if JEPI moves up any more from where it's trading as of currently, my shares will be soon sold and I'll be left with some cash balance that I have a perfect plan on exactly where I want to use it. Now in this video, I'm gonna share with you exactly which other higher income ETF I'm looking to invest all these JEPI earnings into and explain to you my thought process moving forward with this. So if you're interested in seeing what I think is a better, higher yielding, higher income producing cover call style ETF than that of JEPI, make sure to stick around, drop a like down below and let's get right into it. Real quick for those that haven't already, make sure to go to the first link in my description and grab my new dividend investing ebook where I share exactly how I went from $0 invested to now earning over $6,000 on a monthly basis and over $1 million invested in the market. Along with the ebook, you're also going to receive my custom dividend tracker where you can track your dividend progress on an ongoing basis and reach your dividend investing goals. So make sure to grab yourself a copy of my dividend investing ebook and the new dividend tracker today, it's the first link in my description. Now, before we go into this newer ETF that I'm going to be using the JEPI's proceeds and investing into, just some background on the JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF. This is an ETF that I came across several years ago, and because JEPI's expense ratio is relatively low, it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg to hold on to, and back in the day at least, JEPI was paying north of a 10% yield a lot of times. With an ETF outlook that was most likely going to trade more or less sideways, and this is because of the cover call overlay, I as a dividend focused investor that has sort of a knack for income, I was very happy to earn say around 9, 10, 11% per year in dividends. And although long term JEPI's total performance as far as price return and dividends included the total return has not necessarily been bad whatsoever, but over the last 12 or so months, JEPI's dividend just seems to keep getting smaller and smaller with a few flashbacks from dividends from back in the past at 43 cents is what we saw back in December. But the massive dividends of 61 cents, 50 cents plus seem to be more or less a thing of a past at this point. And this is due to JEPI's overall strategy and due to things like volatility, etc. Now, I mentioned that by no means am I really disappointed in JEPI's performance. I mean, over the last 4.16 years, a $10,000 investment into JEPI would have returned an investor around $16.5 thousand dollars or an average annual total return of around 12.72 percent which again is not bad whatsoever but because JEPI is right now a pretty large portion of my portfolio, I currently own over 1,200 shares across all my portfolios combined, which has a value of around $60,000 or so. So not the largest position that I own by any means, but still it's a good chunk of my portfolio. And along with that, because of JEPI's strategy, this ETF doesn't really seem like it's going to have any sort of massive upside anytime soon as far as price return goes. And along with that, the measly 7% more or less trillion 12 month yield, I personally think that there's other better, higher quality income oriented ETFs to invest into. Which brings me into the specific ETF or one of the specific ETFs that I am going to use some of my JEPI's proceeds on. I'm talking about the NEOS S&P 500 High Income ETF or SPYI, which at this point we've talked about a lot on this channel. I've made it very clear that I've been buying SPYI very consistently over the past several months, but still compared to JEPI or still compared to any other higher income ETF holdings in my portfolio, SPYI is still very, very small comparatively. Now, SPYI, just like JEPI, also pays a dividend monthly, which is great, especially because my specific strategy with dividend investing, I long-term personally am trying to build a portfolio that can take care of bills and other things. So dividends coming in monthly is going to be handy. Now, SPYI's distribution yield, is, and this of course can change over time, but as of right now, SPYI has around a 12.08% distribution yield, which is almost double that of JEPI. Now, also double that is the expense ratio. This is something to consider. It is going to be more expensive to hold on to SPYI, and this is definitely going to be something to be concerned about, especially as you grab and gather more and more shares. But the real reason, the main reason on why I'm so bullish on this ETF, even comparing this to JEPI, and why I want to spread out some of those JEPI proceeds into SPYI and other things, is because of the following, the target benefits of the strategy of SPYI. 
The fund seeks to distribute high monthly income generated from investing in the constituents of the S&P 500 and implementing a data-driven call option strategy. So, so far, it sounds just like any other sort of covered call income oriented. Number two, actively managed by NEOs. This is actively managed by NEOs, which means there's going to be a lot more opportunity for upside. The fund seeks to take advantage of tax loss harvesting opportunities in addition to SPX index options classified as Section 1256 contracts, which are subject to lower 60-40 tax rates. Now, when it comes to taxes, everyone's individual situation is going to be different. But for me personally, I'm interested in looking at more tax-favorable investments, especially long-term, which SPYI, at least so far, has done pretty well with. Now, the last reason, this is probably the main reason on why I'm more interested in investing to SPYI as of this moment rather than JEPI. SPYI will buy and sell SPX index options, which may provide the opportunity for upside capture in rising equity markets. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that this is going to be the next growth ETF, of course, but it does mean that because this fund is actively managed, there could be periods of times where this ETF does see some massive upside because of the fact that they're buying and selling SPX index options. And on top of that, there could be a lot more premium that could be gained because of this. Now, the objective for this ETF, this is basically everything that any income-focused, dividend-focused ETF investor could want to look for. It says this ETF seeks high income in a tax-efficient manner with potential for upside appreciation in rising markets. Now, because of SPYI's strategy, I don't necessarily think this ETF is going to move up in price substantially year over year, but still on the max time frame, this ETF is already up around 5% and pays a massive, massive dividend to investors consistently. Or at least has so far, this ETF's management tries to pay more or less the same exact amount to investors, which is around 48 to 49 cents consistently per month. Now, this means that for every single share of SPYI that I'm able to gather at this point, or when I sell off some more of my JEPI shares and move it over into SPYI, I will not only almost be, be doubling my income right off the bat, but on top of that, there's going to be more upside in my opinion as far as price return goes, and the dividends are very consistent, which I love. Not to mention the tax efficiency, of course. Now, for those of you that are curious on what SPYI's total return has been since inception, this ETF over the last 1.88 years has returned around 13.87% on average. And of course, this is only around two years. We don't necessarily know what's going to happen in the future. It's a relatively new ETF, but at least so far, this ETF has done very well. And no, I'm not interested in making this single ETF the largest position in my portfolio, but I am looking to gather some more shares of it just because as of right now, it's relatively small throughout my portfolio. Now, on top of taking some of the JEPI proceeds, and keep in mind, I'm not going to sell every single share of JEPI that I have, that I own as of right now at least, just a little bit here and there, moving it over into things like SPYI and like JEPQ, just because I think there's more upside and more dividends from both of them. But now lastly, most importantly, I wanna hear from you guys down below. What are your honest thoughts of me selling off some of my JEPI and moving it over into SPYI and JEPQ? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to please drop a like and subscribe for more future content like this. Thanks as always for stopping by and if you are interested in investing, make sure to check out these recent videos I posted right here. Check out these recent videos I posted right here.